Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing sh uh, Show, podcast, yeah. whatever we want to be today. We're going to be one of those two, we're both, uh, Jake Clark and Eric Faldi. Um, we are doing the CES 2018 uh, recap. Um, it's so, a February 2nd, just yes. putting that out there. So about a month. We're not going to see any CES releases in April this year, so <laughs> that was... Well, we actually, yeah, we, we were busy, but then we just decided, like, okay... Like, just get all these out. Punch them out every other day is what I've been doing. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching so far. We mm -hmm. still have uh, three to go. Three or four? I think three. So, uh, yeah. But uh, the, so the last one we just went out was the Lulz Lulz Bot one. Yeah, at five axis CNC did extremely well, and the comments are Can... mostly good. Um, at least nobody's being really crappy in there. So, thank you for your comments. Uh, and it's definitely going to be interesting to see. Because I know there are some other things out mm -hmm. there like that, but they're not such an industrial well insight. i mean and and that video kind of kind of totes to why we do this like the podcast aspect of the trade shows um because then you can actually see what's going on because i feel like a lot of the other news sources are just like click it was there like they just yeah. take a picture and walk one, away one and it's picture. like well that's not giving the reason of why or how really more how it does what it needs to do i mean that's really where the the, the podcast kind of came out of um in that sense um, was because, you know, getting these pictures, like talking to the people, diving into things. And we could probably go even deeper with some of the questions. Sure. And we tried a little bit. We went, um, the, we went in the weeds with, uh, with Harris. Yeah, we did. I, that was, that was a good one. He had good answers too. I liked his answers. He could have been, I mean, I won't say he didn't, he, he, he missed a couple things that he like, did. I noticed. Harris, you, 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 you skimmed <laughs> over the task seven. Yeah. I, you I skimmed I, over that it. Was, that was the one part. I was like, oh, okay, he didn't mention anything about that. One of the, the texts there, I guess we can just jump in. Uh, one of the yeah. texts there said that there's also a TAS Mini 2. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Hibiscus under the Devel site. <clears throat> yes. uh, you can look that up if you want. Yeah, it's easy I to find. was looking at it the other day because one of one of the uh, employees wanted to look at it. But. Yeah, pretty much the, the big difference is, uh, I mean, the plates are going to be modular, I think, from the gate instead of being an upgrade, and then the uh, Z-axis will be belt-driven rather than... Well, yeah, I mean, they're looking at different things, because yeah, I know that that's seeing. that's one of the things that they were they, that they were showing on their Devel site was different ways of doing the Z-axis. And so like I, I talked off-camera with Harris a little bit about that, um, and they're still looking at, you know, what is the best option for that. Um, I mean, this year, so CES overall, in my opinion, was small mm -hmm. for the 3D printing. Very small. Um, the, the booths were more developed for the people that were there, which was nice. Now, it wasn't the heydays of 2015, 2014, and a little bit of 2016 where you had, like, the big booths. Like, 2015, I think, was the first year we went. There was no 3D Systems booth. Like, well, like, not, not, there and there was no one, Stratasys. And there wasn't anything like that size. There was no Stratasys. There was no... The maker 3D, bot. Nope. So, that's... What we're starting to see is more turned towards, I think, the Rapid uh, uh, plus TCT uh, trade show that is now this year in Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, we're still debating whether we're going or not and if we're doing the podcast. So we'll just kind of see when that time comes. Um, but overall, as the show for the 3D printing, it was very small. It was in, it was in the North Hall uh, this time instead of the Sands, um, which doesn't really matter to yeah, me it um it was nice to actually go walk around like other technologies that are sort of related to 3d printing instead of like here's a fitbit here's your home like it it i think it felt like it fit more into the technology aspect of of the north hall than it would in the home technology of the south hall um so overall it was decent um I've actually got some pictures up on my tablet here that, that we can kind of go yep, through. So we saw, <laughs> so we saw Mark Forged. Um, we've gotten confused by them a couple times. Yeah, I think. I, well, yeah, the logos. I mean, someone said like you guys should send a cease and desist. I think technically theirs is older than ours, and also uh, it depends. If you want to talk I mean, about logo design, like there's a lot of. There's stuff actually going three on. of us, four of us that have roughly the same logo uh, design. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Square Square Reader. Sure. It's like no. the same logo. <laughs> No, it's a 3D, but, um, so anyway, you know, so we saw the Mark Forge stuff. It was neat. They were breaking one of their, uh, metal 3D printed, um, components. So that was really cool to see. Um, that was really all they had. I mean, they had a couple of new materials, but mm -hmm. there wasn't really much, like no new machine, nothing. I don't think that, um, uh, 
I forget the guy's name that owns the co- You think I'd remember the guy's name from the company? We've, we've interviewed so many people. The, the president of the company was not there as far as I know. Mm-hmm. If he was, I did not see him. But. So then the next one that we kind of looked at was the DaVinci side of things. You know, they have their full color FDM. Um, the prints looked okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and we have some pictures that will show. They were decent for what they are. Really, it's just ink staining the, the print. Um, one thing that we saw a lot of throughout the show Trump. was Donald Trump's. <laughs> Constantly Donald Trump's. And both domestic companies and foreign companies had them um, in some regards. So that was kind of an, I don't, I don't know, it was just an ongoing thing that I mean, we it's, saw. It's recognizable. Everybody say, oh, look, look <clears> think it looks like him. And, and so that was just one thing we noticed. Uh, one new thing that I think, I don't know if it was announced at CES, but there's an AIO, I don't know if it's AIO Robotics, that would be my best guess, but it's a scanner and DaVinci Color combo. Just the, AI, the, the DaVinci Color AIO or something mm. like that. So that's something. Well, they also had their CJP machine working. Yeah. This is, well, working with an asterisk because it wasn't actually printing anything, but it was going through the motions. Oh. Um, so that was actually something that we've been, I think, looking at for like the last three trade shows that we've gone there. It was like the first one was just empty box. The second one like had more components into it. Now this one was actually running. Um, and that's not going to be as cheap as, as, as we initially thought. Mm. I think that one's going to be running that in that 20 to 40 range. Um, so it's not necessarily more accessible than, um, I think what like 3d systems was trying to hit the 10 K mark with theirs. Uh, a couple years ago. I think XYZ, one of their Da Vinci's, one of the smaller ones, it, they said they had a new version. I said, so what's new about it? It's like, oh, it has voice commands. It's like, and nothing else? No running changes? Like, it has voice commands. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, uh, I mean, they had an okay, it was a big booth. They had one of the bigger ones. Yeah. They, and they do a little bit more than just three. Oh, sure. Printing. They had robots. They had, like, like scanners, I think, and just a little of everything. So then we hopped down and we looked at Lol's bot. We actually ran into Joel Telling. Joel so we, Telling was there. That was so cool. we we He's got really to chat nice. with him. Yeah. He's really tall. I didn't. The intro to that podcast. Oh yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah. The, well, no, that. But then it was like <laughs> uh, it, it was it was. I didn't have any notes oh, prep. No, we didn't plan to talk to him. We, no. we didn't think he would have time. And then we're just like, oh, you have time? He's like, yeah, I got seven minutes. And we were actually gonna do it on the on the second. Or like the third day. Yeah, yeah. We were gonna come back the third day because he was so busy, and then and then he's like, "Well, you know what? I got like ten minutes right now, and I'm like, cool, let's do this." And I did not have anything yeah, prepped. So, so like the, the, weather, the first the, the the Pacific Northwest weather came up. Yeah. So like the first the, the first couple minutes was just me trying to like get enough for Joel to like carry on the part, so I could think about what it got. It got better. Yes, because I was able to think about more things as I was going. Um, so that's who we saw at the at the Lulzbot booth. They were actually assembling mm-hmm. Lulzbot minis. Um, 20, 20 of them. They, they they did five a day, but they were saying, oh, we could have done like 10 a day. Yeah. So they were just doing, you know, they were taking the time. And they had uh, a specific <clears throat> version, which they gave away. The, the, it's over now, so you can't win one anymore. But if you were there or online, uh, you could win a special Lulzbot Las Vegas, made in Las Vegas, and a little special... Uh, laser Angry. marking on the on the control box. See, and I think this would have been a demo that would have been really cool out in like the main area where there's like more traffic. Um, I felt like because then then like the message of how 3D printing works in this regards of hey we can print stuff we can assemble it and we can have it all done you know right there. Um, when it was in the 3D printing section itself, I felt like, okay, you know, like everyone, I think in the 3D printing section knew, yeah. like, okay, this is what they do. It, it, it didn't um, get buried, but it's definitely kind of preaching to the I, choir a bit. Yeah. And I think it would have had a little bit more higher impact and more of a wow factor, uh, than huh, wow. And that's there. That's not yeah. laws. That's that, that, CES's. That, that, that marketing is very odd. That's CES's marketing, but like, it would have had more of the wow factor, I think out in more of a main area where there's higher traffic. Yeah. Um, just to showcase and really tell that story of why that is what it is. Harris where, was saying they were still getting that much foot traffic of just oh, kind of the randoms walking through and saying, oh, oh yeah. it's like Terminator, like, yeah, sure. I mean, you definitely do. There's a lot of people that are walking walking through, but nothing like the main hall where you have to wait 45 minutes for, uh, for a patty melt. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I kicked my panini over. <laughs> you did. You <laughs> booted that. That's and the thing. then If you've never been to CES before, or just any big trade show, there's not really good uh, infrastructure for anything. The line for the panini was 20, 30 minutes. That was the short line. Like yeah. Other stuff was like over an hour for a burger. Unless you wanted to walk through and get a salad, yeah. that was like five minutes. Yeah. But even still, for a, for a, for a grab-and-go salad, it was five minutes. There's, so there's nowhere to sit. Like we, we, I think you just kind of sit wherever you can. 
Like yeah. there's like five chairs to sit at and I couldn't, there's no room. Yeah. So like we went back and we actually found out that there was a different eating place within our specific North Hall, like in the corner. And the lady there was like super nice. She remembered us. It was great. Like, yeah. Every day she's like, oh, you, you boys coming back for, <laughs> for some, for some water, some food and, and oh yeah, come back tomorrow. Today was like packed, like wasn't even packed at all. Yeah, like, you come a half hour early and you skip the lunch rush. Like people, everybody wants to eat right at noon and it was mm-hmm. just a problem. And it's probably based around like the tracks and the, the meetings and whatnot. But, but like the, like, like you said, the infrastructure for handling that bad. volume of people. Um, and if you're going to like, p- and, and specifically for like the, the panini line or whatever that we were in, it's like, okay, if you're going to have something that has to be made like that in such a high traffic area, um, pre-make some stuff, especially if you're not going to be able to have them, um, customizable. Cause I was like, Hey, can we yeah, get no cheese? I and wanted no like, cheese. The lady said, yeah, no cheese. They said, Oh, they're not going to do that. So it's like, well, if you're going to pre-make these and pre-make <laughs> them, don't. So right, let's hop back in. We talked to Lulzbot. They had the assembly line. Um, yep. They showed off the arrow extruder, which oh, is then, the Titan arrow. Yep. With e th- from E three D E three D, which they com- well, I don't know if they teamed up. And then, and that and that's but. one that I'm I'm really looking forward to from a weight perspective, um, because the other sure. heads were just so heavy. I've been saying that for um, a while. Just, oh wanna, yeah, and I, I think they've known it. Up. Yeah, it's I think too they've heavy. known it. And, but, and it also cuts down like the some of the sizes, like with the dual extruders, you end up losing a lot of build area. Because then we hopped down and we saw Flux, or were, flux. are these flux. are these pictures from... This is Flux. Um, okay. I guess technically the Trump one here is, uh, that was off of the Flux Delta Plus. Okay. The other ones are off of the the Beambox, which is a 40 or 50 watt laser. Yep. They have both options, and it's going to be on Kickstarter, or uh, Indiegogo in March. Mm-hmm. So that video is out. And then we stopped by the, the Lunar booth a Astro little bit. Astro Reality. Yep. We stopped by that a little bit and looked at them. Um, was, we didn't talk. We didn't do an no, interview. I just took pictures. But um, the, the thing that they told me was that um, with the smaller ones, you have to use it on. You can't move it from that base. You have to leave it on there because hmm. um, otherwise it's not going to track it properly. They only did like the full tracking. So like you pick it up and do the, the AR stuff with the big one. Okay. So you got to pay a little extra for that. But I think it was you know around $200. So it depends on what you want. They did look pretty good. Not quite as good as I expected. To be honest, but it was still really cool. Yeah. Uh, there's Beambox, I mean, and then we talked to Ethereal Machines yeah, with Vive from, Axis, from and India. the first time India has won an innovation award at CES, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, and so we have a whole podcast about them specifically, so go check that out. Vive um, Axis CNC slash 3D printer. Yeah, and it's just going to be interesting to see how that works out. Um, we'll just see. Um, I think it's a unique thing. Um, it was a very rough machine, in my opinion, and I think that further development of it will actually hinder a way better, more clean-cut piece of hardware um, where, and than from where it is right now. Um, but I think it's a unique unique aspect of, yeah. of I mean, 3D. It was well put together, at least. Like, you know, it's enclosed. It wasn't very loud at all. Like, it was quieter than I expected. It it wasn't, so you're saying it wasn't a fifth-gen high, mini? High wind rails and ball screws. So, I mean, they, they, you know, they know what they're doing. But I love my fifth gen mini. Yeah, well, it's not a, it prints. <laughs> uh, we talked to Airwolf. Yep. They have a new printer out called the Evo. It mm-hmm. can print in metal, much like a Mark Forged minus. With the Mark Forged, you get a suite of things where it's like printer, center, oven. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Or like, this is just the printer. Just the printer, but it's seven thousand dollars, which mm-hmm. is a lot more cost effective for a smaller company. Mm-hmm. And then they have people that you can deal with uh, specifically for the sintering and the oven. And I asked because they gave me a Bitcoin, I, d- I should have grabbed it, but I don't uh, want a picture of it. There are pictures, yeah. Uh, but I said, what if I just put it in the oven? I said, do you have an oven that goes up to a thousand degrees? Like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> so yeah, speaking of Airwolf, uh, Eric Wolf invited us to. They have a house out in uh, Las Vegas. Yeah because they go to a lot of trade shows out in Vegas. Um, they're based in somewhere in California, I forget. Yeah, uh, but, LA area. But uh, they invited us to a house party at their place. We didn't take any pictures because I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but it was, <laughs> it was a very good time. Thank you, Eric, for yeah, thank you for, out. for bringing us out. One there. Eric to another. Um, it, was a fun, it was a very fun time. Um, but yeah, the Evo, and it can do a lot of materials. Mm-hmm. Uh, Enclosed, it has a heated build chamber. It can get up pretty hot. I don't know how hot, but like four. And it was cool to walk around the car that they had Celsius. in the booth and talk about yeah. the different aspects of what they actually did there to it. There was the Hellcat. Uh, I don't. I think it, I want to say it's a Dodge. I, I don't know. I don't know a car person. I I I, I don't know either. Um, next one that is just in sequence here. We can talk about the form cells a little bit. Um, so that was a unique thing. What I found was most interesting about this was they are custom one-off pieces. It's not. 
you buy a form cell. It's you buy the, you know, oh, you okay. buy, yeah, you buy it and then you can mod it to whatever you want to do, um, which is really interesting to hear that. Um, one of the things that I was kind of bummed about was that you still have to put in the resin. Yeah, I'm sure that's something that they'll work on over time, but for right now, you still have to manually put in resin as mm -hmm. it gets low, which is a bit irritating. Well, and, and if you're if you're talking about doing it lights out, you know, when you look at injection molding for lights out, like you have a Gaylord of material and it goes for a long time, mm -hmm. where the resin, theoretically, it can go for a long time, but to do it actual. Yeah. It's nice with those machines that it will stop and you can just get it the next day but you know mm -hmm. it will it will have and then the curing the post curing there. isn't done in a process like the cleaning is but not the curing mm -hmm. so i thought that was really interesting and and we didn't get to dive in uh too much into why besides that you have to take the the, the part off but like why couldn't you just take the whole plate and just stick it in and rotate it yeah um, you pretty much said that there are a lot of people that have uh not recommended post processing or post like curing and stuff so he said well We'll just leave that up to the customer. Um, I'm sure in the future they'll have something. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be, I wouldn't say it would be not hard, but I imagine it wouldn't be impossible to get something put together. One thing that uh, we did not talk about, there's a color kit for Form Labs now. Mm. Um, I didn't, I don't think I have a, a legible one here, but it's like 16 colors. They look pretty good. And 16 recommended recipes. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty but interesting. That's, yeah. They're nice, really vibrant colors. So if you can, you can dye. Uh, form prints, I guess. I guess you'd probably just do it with the resin itself. I'm actually not, I'm not sure about this, but you can look into it online if you want. Yeah, we didn't dive into that. We just really dove into the into the fuse, fuse and and form yeah. cell. Yeah. And the fuse, we didn't actually get a process of of it going, um, unfortunately. Which like I really love to get in like to these machines. I, I wanted to see what it looked like on but the inside. I think they they were like, well, yeah, <laughs> but you'd have to come back at the right time and da da da. That was a like, problem because like, I wanted okay. to see the um, I wanted to see the arm move on the form cell. And then there was a power outage on day two, which in our part was more like a little blip, yep. but it, any printer that didn't have battery backup, you found out. Cause yeah, I mean, everybody was running around. It's, it's a demo, like a trade show, I get it. Um, but like um, uh, Airwolf, there's fine, you know, yeah. cause they have the the battery saver or whatever it's and called. And Race 3D would technically be fine as well. Yeah, it pretty much, it, it saves the G code and restarts after everything goes back up. But yeah, like a lot yeah, of Yeah, the so they were things. scrambling. And that was like right after I think our interview too. Sure. Yeah. Um, because we were we were just kind of, you know, collecting some B-roll and then they're like, oh, the power blipped. And like they had to go yeah, and restart everything. Yeah, come back another 45 minutes. Like, okay, why didn't you guys do a 10 minute print so I could come back? Yeah. It was okay. Or yeah, stagger them a little bit. It is what it is. but. but it's a very interesting process. Um, but no, back to the fuse, like that was one of the things I was a little bit disappointed is, is I would love to have opened that up and shown some images of the inside of it, but um, I think they did a lot of the printing so that it would end in the evenings and then they would switch it out when everyone left. So Yeah, I mean, it is like, <clears throat> it's still thin powder that you don't want people <clears throat> around. I'll take the risk. I want to yeah. see the inside. I want to show the inside. We got a CJP machine around here. We it's do. way more dangerous. <laughs> We do, and it's going to have ceramic powder at Let's some see. point. There's just so a bunch of we can we can hop down there. to Kodak here. So yeah. the Kodak machine was really interesting, um, and we saw Polaroid, Polaroid too. And, and and sad. Oh, Polaroid. Sad. Polaroid was sad. Uh, so Kodak actually has their stuff together, which I'm really excited for. Um, so they're using an E3D uh, hot end, which good, perfect. Like mm -hmm. go out and use the stuff that is known to work. Do not reverse engineer f just for this printer. Um, so I really love that they're that they're doing that. The machine itself, it looks pretty decent. Um, you know, it, I think it was a prototype, so there was a little bit of rigidness to it um, that I don't think we'll see in the final version. Like, like the screen wasn't perfectly lined up in the window. Yeah, like and, the logo and was not the right color, but you know, it, fun functional. We did see it air printing, which I don't know. I, I, know I think they other, switched it after the fact. I, I don't know. <laughs> it happens. You yeah. know, it, it, it's a trade show. The printer itself looks very solid. The fact that it was yes. air printing, a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going, whatever. I was going into this with the Polaroid, yeah. <laughs> like, lens on, huh? Um, with that mindset going, okay, you know, this is Kodak. It's going to end up like Polaroid. It's just going to be bad. And then I get into the booth, I'm like, oh. This actually isn't bad. Solid they actually know what they're talking they about. They actually, yeah, they actually did their homework. And and it sounds like the filament is going to be more of recommended, I, if I remember correctly, um, versus like strictly. You Chip, have to use and closed source and everything. And uh, 
so the next one that we went to was Monoprice, and um, we didn't get an interview with them. We just talked to them. Um, we got to see a bunch of their of their different machines that they had out. They had the uh, Delta Pro, which is um, you know has a 270 millimeter diameter by 300 millimeter build height. Um, and you know it says up to three times faster with silent drivers and touchscreen. Uh, we'll see once people start yeah, reviewing it. I feel like some of that was <clears throat> a little bit of fluff, but it was it was extremely quiet. And that it was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was more quiet than like a Rep Two. Um, and the guy that was in there was actually one of the one of the founders of 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 the piece that was making that hardware, and uh, like he knew what he was talking about. So that again is really nice to see that the people behind like these bigger branded machines. Um, know what they're doing. So kudos to you, Chris, um, out there for, 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 for finding the right people to bring those products in. Um, UV resin, we didn't dive into that too much. The Mini V3 and the Plus V3, um, those have some really unique stuff. So I, it, you know, the head is, is different. Um, there's some different leveling with it. Uh, the head itself on the Plus is, is, is a little bit bigger, um, than, than the regular one. Um, so it's just improvements on what they've already done um, with similar price points, which yeah, is like which auto is, leveling. They introduced into which is the great Monoprice Mini, which is great Monoprice Mini Two. I don't know what they called it, or I guess it's <clears> the V <throat> Three. Never mind. Mm -hmm. It is the V Three. So that was really interesting. So that was Monoprice. Then we hopped down to Eureka Park um, for a little bit, and we ran into Snapmaker. Yeah, it's um, a, it was a Kickstarter printer. It did pretty well. It's I don't know how many they're out in the wild, but it's uh, it's a pretty pretty. One of the things that printer. I think is really unique about this one is using the phone like the old rotary for, phone cord style um, for the data to the head instead of using like a flex cable. Yeah, I think it is. Um, it's either a Cat or five a or cable. Cat seven cable. But like you think about that, it's like oh, like that is designed you can make it yourself for people if you have to. to you know, go back and forth with like the phone. Like, so it's designed for movement where like flex cables, yes they are, but they're they they, they they're more easy um, to break. Yeah, they get pinch points really easily. So that was one, like, yeah, it, it kind of looks meh with it, but it <laughs> it serves a really good function and I really liked that aspect yeah, of it. and the head's modular, like you just. It was bulky. I mean, It was yeah, super yeah. bulky. Yeah. And super heavy, it's, but it's all in there though. So. But when you look at the aluminum extrusion that they're using, like okay, it can be because yeah. it can support that. It's pretty beefy, and then um, yeah, the screen you can pick it up and like mess with it and put it back, so that's kind of slick. So the other one that we looked at, and I don't remember the actual um, name of this big one. Um, I had a paper from him too. Oh, I cannot read that. I don't remember, to be honest with you. I could find uh, create three D technologies. Sure, creative three D right. technologies. This guy is like eighteen. He might be yeah, and, and and you know to do this, to build this machine, to source everything, to like kudos to you. Um, the machine itself had some issues, and he and he noted this with a giant picture on the front mm -hmm. of the machine um, was shipping damage. He dropped it. Yeah, and you know, and so that kind of you know you look throughout the whole machine, and there was printed brackets that were broken. There was things that were off. So, you know, coming into the show, you know, that's that's a difficult thing to have happen. And he's in, he's new to the, to the to the 3D printing market. So he's gonna have to go and find out all these different aspects of manufacturing, about printing. Um, the price point for the build volume is, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it was way better than like a, like a big rep. But again, buying a big rep, is like buying, you know, like a Raise 3D versus a Mono, mono Price Maker Select, or uh, well, actually, let me back up. Buying a buying a, a, a big rep versus this would be like buying a Raise 3D versus a uh, a Net A8 kit. You know, you have different expectations between the two, um, and I think the same goes with this. In my opinion, you're going to see more tinkering with this um, on the actual work with it. Um, I hope that he can actually get it to a point where it is just more of a plug and play style. Um, but I think this is one to look for and watch out and see how this one progresses. Um, and I hope it progresses in the right direction, but there's a lot of kinks in the way for him to actually get it to a really good uh, printer. 
Um, well, in my for, for, for production anyway, like I'm sure the printer works really well for, but for scaling, you need to make it more manufacturable. Yeah. And uh, again, 18 year old kids. Oh, so it was it, that, that part of it, it's like, Hey, you know, go for this in the 3d printing market. Um, just be prepared, um, to be eaten alive it's in a, certain it's aspects. It's a race to the bottom right now. It is. And quality and, 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 and that kind of play into it. So once we got out of the, you know, I don't think we need to really touch on, on the Polaroid side. No, um, I mean, I, there, I took a, you see the picture of what I did there. I'm just going to, I'll put the picture. Yeah, you can put the pictures up it, of the it's, Polaroids. It's, it's still. It, it's not great. It's still bleh. Um, we went to Casio, Casio because someone tipped us off, said Casio has something called 2.5D printing. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that sounds like a buzzword. We show up, uh, it turns out there's like this strange machine called the Mofrel. And it uh, it looks like a giant like coffee table slash um, Microsoft touchpad. Yeah, like a table. it looks like a large format printer, which it is, but the printing is not that big. <laughs> and so how this works is it has a sheet of paper, and then it actually has a material in the center that can go, and you can manipulate that with heat. And then with that heat, um, it'll bubble it up into different textures. Um, so like this is really interesting. So like one example is um, like the Braille aspect mm -hmm. where now you could have um, I think in their example you had a work instruction and then you could actually have the Braille right on it and print it like that. Um, other examples that they had were um, of an interior car fabrics and like it, it felt like the texture of the of the fabric but it did not feel like fabric if that makes sense. It has the texture, the texture of fabric, but it's not the same material. So. Yeah. So you don't get the material feel, yeah. but you get like, oh, that's what it would kind of feel like and look like, because um, this also does color. Yeah. Um, it was pretty. It was pretty crazy because they had three different sides, and there was like, you know, like car stuff, and then like fashion, fashion. and then the other one was more just like textures, like textile stuff. And we talked to the textile lady because she actually knew more than trying to walk to the other ones that didn't really know what they were talking about. And I feel like we would have just gotten like the, the flash in the pan where the lady that we chatted with like actually knew more stuff about it. So that was really helpful. Yeah, I think, I don't remember <clears throat> the exact numbers, but they were saying how thick it could go. They said like, I wanted, I, I'm just, it's rough, but like 1.5 millimeters was good. 2.5 was like, they could do it, but it starts getting kind of, the quality gets lower at that point. And the price point for this is at about 50K. Yeah. Um, so not too terrible for what it is. Good for a university because, I mean, if they have architecture, grant, grant money or something. Or for a car manufacturer that wants to have, you know, better replicas um, so that they don't have, you know, so that earlier in the process they can talk about that instead of trying and going and sourcing out all those components and having somebody make those samples. Um, Interior design. One of the things um, that stuff too. I would have really loved to see with this, and I hope this is something that they can they can implement in technology here later on, would be um, creating the textures like you do here or, or similar, but then having it on a piece of um, some sort of plastic substrate that we could go and thermal form or vacuum form over a 3D print. So just make it make it something where we could like heat heat form over it. Yeah. Something that's not going to melt or whatever. Because I, I actually don't know exactly. Well, how it's something so that when you works. stretched it out over the part, like you could actually utilize it on that part specifically oh, I, I see what instead of trying to like cut it and everything. Sure. So oh, that was yeah 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 that was the thing. I was hoping it would have a die cut or something, and mm. it does not. So you have to do all the cutting by hand at the moment. Um, I mean, you could probably design around you that. Could probably throw in like a vinyl cutter. You could, yeah. You'd have to have like you need register marks and stuff. Or that cure cut could, or cr circuit cut, cut cry cut, cry cricket. cut. It's cricket. I cricket. always say it wrong. No, there's another one. Cricket silhouette. Um, there's the the know. one at Michael's, like any craft store. I like three hundred bucks. Well, you could pair it with something like that. Actually, um, you could probably put in some perforation too, just like built in, so it would be a little easier to cut. I don't know, but it. Yeah, you can go crazy. <clears throat> but the show itself, so like that was that was kind of the end of it. Um, the show itself was was halfway decent. Um, I don't know if we're going to go next year. Heard inklings that the, I mean, we talked to people that weren't in the three D printing area. Like Sprint Ray was out. In, mm, they were way off. Yeah, in the they corner. were they were a good like half mile away in the same building, but pretty far. Um, so I mean, we talked to people. They said, yeah, we tried to get in the three D printing area. Like with Kodak, they said, yeah, we couldn't get in. They cut off. They cut it off at some point. And then people wanted bigger booths. They wouldn't give them bigger booths. They're just there's not a lot of room. 
Um, I, I don't know. I guess CES is doing what they want to do. But next year, I heard it's going to be smaller. Yep, it's going to be smaller. Um, so I think we're, we're starting to see the move away from CES in the consumer side and more towards something like Rapid, where it, it is very specific. And I'm looking forward to going to Rapid to see all the, all the 3D printing stuff specifically um, and actually have constructive um, conversations instead of, I feel like CES is more of the... Um, showiness. The flashy news show. Yeah, and... There's, and there was cool and, stuff, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and definitely, all the 3D printing stuff was cool, and it was neat, and it's good tech. Um, but I think I think the CES value for the 3D printing market is losing its its flame. Yeah, I'd say last year was probably the last... I mean, this year was good. <clears throat> last year, I think, was better overall, but this year we had some pretty interesting booths, too. We did see Shaq. But yeah, I, we saw Shaq, and I think Charles Barkley in... Uh, I, I forget so. the name of the restaurant, but yeah, it was cool. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I think last I year we saw LMFAO. It was the dude with the afro from that group. Yeah, yeah, but I, I wanted to ask Shaq because I'm I'm a big fan. I don't know if I I can I, I like Good Burger. I don't know if I like it because it's good, but I do enjoy Good Burger. I wanted to ask him about it, and I just he, he had a really big security guard, and I'm not a very big guy. I didn't want to have a problem. And Shaq is you know he, he's just trying to eat lunch. I'm not trying to bother him. Yeah, that was kind of the thing. Like everyone was trying to take pictures. Yeah, of you him. saw some lady had her flash. I'm like, come on, lady, turn that off. I know it's dark in here, but you know you don't need a picture that bad. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, he sat next to the table, so that was that was neat. I don't think we saw any other big celebrity names there. Um, not that I could. And think see, of. so like, and so I guess a little background of why maybe we brought up Shaq was every single year we've gone we've gone to CES, we've always come back, and people are like, yeah, Shaq just walked by, and then like the next year, like, yeah, he was he's he's gonna be here in like twenty minutes, and then he never shows. So it's kind of interesting, like the him. one he's, time he's next to us, the accident. one time that yeah. we're not actually looking for him. And, Shaq shows up. <clears throat> so, but it was it was cool. It was a good show. So, um, anything else I'm you want to add? think of with CES anyway? I, we had fun Uber drivers. Uh, yeah, we actually had really Las Vegas Uber drivers are crazy. Like they're oh, uh, they're great. That's uh, a, that was an experience all of its own. Like it was. It, you know, Everyone was different. We only had like two Uber drivers that were boring. Like nobody was bad. There were just a couple of people that didn't talk. But yeah, there was one. There was one guy that didn't talk for like forty minutes, and then you and I were just talking about business stuff. And then we got to a point I made that him was laugh like funny. I was talking about um, we 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 saw someone we didn't want to talk to. I'll say that much. Uh, and then I said, uh, for business reasons, I'd say hi, and then I'd follow Jake because <laughs> I have to. He's my ride pretty much. Uh, but then the guy started laughing. It's like this Jamaican guy, like just quiet the whole time. He starts laughing. They were just talking about Trump for like the last ten minutes of the ride. So it was good. Yeah. No, it was uh, all the Uber, Uber drivers were great. So that's one city where it is <laughs> take, take the Uber. Yeah. Take the Uber. Give them a good tip. Um, it they're, is they're crazy. Funny. Yeah. It's, no, again, with infrastructure, just everything scales poorly when you have that many people. Oh yeah, it's just yeah. just crazy. But um, I think stuff, that's all in-house stuff. <clears throat> we should have said at the beginning because yeah. now we have like the last few people still watching. But <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, yes. We're gonna try to keep doing podcasts, not maybe as much, but I think we're gonna cut back yeah. um, and do more when we have like something big, um, like the three D hubs debacle. Um, There's more three D hub stuff going. There on is, <laughs> but we'll we probably or, we'll time. wait for the dust to settle yeah. on that to, to maybe dive into soon. it. Last time we didn't talk too soon either, but that was good. No, we should talk um, earlier. We, we had a fourth year anniversary. Yes, that so we sold um, four years. Yep, um, we're here for close to three and a half. And then well, there's uh, second hire out of the whole company. Oh, that, well, you're something the, like you're that. Number two. I'm the, sec the the one that's left. There was another one that you know was here for school or whatever, and then. She's, well, we literally hired her like a day before you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm still here. Um, there was something else. Oh, we're getting close to 3,000 subs. So yeah. keep your eyes open. We'll have a video probably specifically just for a giveaway. Uh, I think we're about 100, 100 something away. So I can look. Um, it's probably going to slow down a bit because we had a bit of an uptick because of a uh, popular video. Yeah. So maybe March. I'm just putting that March or April sometime around when we go to Rapid. Yeah, 28.86. Okay, so just a little over 100. So tell your friends to subscribe, and after we hit after we hit it, we'll we'll put a video out, and we'll probably Do we'll give something away. away. Not sure what yet. Probably filament, but we can we can maybe take suggestions and then yeah. shoot down a lot of them. <laughs> we're not going to give any 3D printers away. We're not. We're no, not, we're we not don't. We don't have like since we don't <laughs> sell printers anymore, it's no. very difficult for us to get. I mean, our even hands if on we some. were selling them, it. No. <laughs> yeah, we gave away one like early on, and even then it was like, ah, oh, that's a lot of money to give away as we're starting out. But yeah, I can I can um, say this much: YouTube does not make us much money. That thirty thousand dollar or thirty thirty thousand view video got us like twenty bucks, which is yeah. food for two people. 
<laughs> it's not going to get pretty much for sure, but that's uh, going to get popped for the fridge. Yeah. So get a nice, get a nice 24 pack. Yeah. But thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back at some point. I have a few little projects that we might cover a little bit like this dragon project. I should, I just closed my computer, but it's a, it's a Korean maker. He's really good uh, with articulation and ball joints and stuff. So this is all PLA or APLA from, uh, from 3D Fuel. Yeah, it, it was a little bit tricky to print, so we might talk about that in another podcast. Cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Make sure to subscribe, follow us. Um, we'll have more videos, more how-to videos, um, and all the liking coming soon. Thanks. So I think at the beginning of the episode, we should mention just a couple like housekeeping things. Like, hey, had our fourth anniversary party, and uh, I, I haven't talked to you about it, but we're getting close to 3,000 subs, so I figured we should do something. I don't know what. Give away a subway card. I mean, that's something. Dang, an expired subway card.